Hi Copic fans and welcome back to Copic in the Craft Room. This week we're going to continue on with our mixed media series and add some more to um, some pieces of our mixed media album. Remember that the techniques we're doing can be transferred onto any craft project. It's using Copic reinkers and Copic sketch markers. This time we're going to be looking at fabric techniques. So come join me and get a little inky on those fingers. All right, I have gathered a lot of stuff here. These are all things that are starting with a neutral color and that we are gonna be dyeing, or I'm gonna be dyeing today in different ways. A lot of it is really similar and some of this might be techniques you've already seen, but some of it might be new as well. Last time we did a lot of airbrushing and we did do a single piece of fabric um, with our airbrush and any of these fabrics could be airbrush so make sure you understand that the other issue things that I have here on the table with me are I do have my reinkers that I've been using the three colors I have been using for this project are R83 V04 and V17 I have my Copic various ink colorless blender I also have some of that in a mister this is a cheap um, spray bottle that I got this one actually is just out of the um, travel section of a Target or Walmart, so big 50 cents, I think. But all I'm doing is I'll use that to spray some of my colorless blender as well. I have some um, hand sanitizer nearby, so I might be doing some stuff on my craft mat. I think the only other things I need are a pair of scissors to cut some of this down and then a few markers. So let me grab those and we will start dyeing things. All right, I am gonna start, I think, with the ribbon and we'll do a couple different things with that. So I'm gonna cut off chunks, or at least cut this into sections. A Couple things that you might already know how to do with ribbon is one, you can go ahead and truly just color directly on that ribbon. If I do that, I usually use um, one of my sketch markers and I tend to use the chisel nib. And you can literally run your marker You can see how that's bleeding. I can encourage that further with a little bit of my colorless blender. It's going to bleed those colors together. So that is one really neat way of coloring up your ribbon. Technique number two, ribbon in a sandwich baggie. So technique number two, you can dye that in a baggie, depending on how much you're willing to kind of squish it around, you're gonna get a nice even coloring. I tend to like mine variated, so I don't do, I don't spend as much time. I'm also picking up some ink that's already on my fingers because this is wet. This will dry fairly quickly, but any ink you have on your surface or on your hands is gonna pick right up, especially when that ribbon's wet, so be real aware. You're gonna transfer some of that, that color that you've got. So one other way is I could go directly on my mat. I can either color on my mat or I can drip. Again, kind of a neat, almost tie-dye effect. The one side, you can even see those stripes that kind of got created. But I could do the same effect by dripping the ink directly on the mat and picking it up. Fabric is a wonderful thing because it's going to absorb all that moisture, so it'll pick it right up off your mat. As much as anything, spraying that ink with the re um, with the colorless blender is just getting it reliquified. So I'm going to pick up the rest of this with my ribbon. Might as well not waste it. 
So there are some techniques with ribbon. I can do very, very similar effects with fabric. So I'm going to take this longer piece of silk so you can see how some of this is going to work. We're going to do kind of side by side. I'm going to drip some ink and then wet it. I'm going to wet some the fabric and then drip the ink so you can see that variation. I'm going to start with that V04. Again, it dries really fast. This first one is almost dry because that alcohol just evaporates. But you can see on this one, I'm not going to see as distinct of marks, and that is because I wet it first. Similar effect if you do watercolor, if you're going straight onto dry paper, or if you're doing Copic even, if you're going straight onto dry paper, the ink stays stationary longer if you're putting it on wet. So you have that alcohol down first or that water down first in the case of watercolor. You're going to see that bleeding immediately take place. And so we have a very soft effect when we change over to that. So easy way to dye some fabric um, and with a whole variation on color and that is really fun. Another way we can do silk that I think is kind of fun as well, and I can ink it, I can get it wet first, which I'm going to do this time, or I can do it dry, but I'm going to do similar to the ribbon. I'm going to stick it in a bag and dye it. Don't forget that Copic ink is not going to work on wearable fabrics. You cannot put this in the washing machine. So this is just for art and your creative crafts. And what I personally like about this effect is it really does look tie-dye, which is what we're doing in effect in that plastic bag. Um, it does keep your hands a little cleaner by putting it in here, but more importantly, it creates these amazing effects on your fabric. So it's truly a tie-dye effect. Um, it's pulling out into those crinkles and creating a really neat look. This will fade a little bit as it dries. So we also have some tool and so I'm going to cut off a section of this and I'm going to put it right into the same bag that I used. I don't necessarily need to wet this first so I'm going to stick it right into the bag and I suddenly have a beautiful pink tool instead of my white. Again, easy peasy. You can add it to anything, especially when you can buy this stuff in huge spools. Just buy white. You've got a bunch of colors. Don't bother with buying all these separate colors. Create your own. It actually stiffens it up just a touch. Um, that ink does, and so sometimes it's even easier to tie bows and things once it has been colored. I think you'll like it. So that's easy. I do that in the bag again. It's just simple to keep it all contained and you really get a good, um, it mixes the colors really, really well. For my netting, I think I'm gonna try to kill two birds with one stone here. I am gonna try just setting this on top and we're gonna wet it a little bit first. In fact, I think I'll wet So the netting has kind of a polka dot effect. I could go back in and do a little more. If I wanted it more consistent, I can put it in a bag. You can always do this with your hands. You don't have to stick it in a bag, but then you have inky hands, which most of the time really doesn't bother me. You can see that effect. I've got kind of a splotch, but I've got that ink now even in the in-between areas. What I like about what happened underneath is I've got those splotches, but I've also got the pattern of the netting happening on that um, pattern paper down below. And tissue paper works equivalently as well 
dripping, spraying it to get it all damp, and then just crumpling it up. It's gonna spread that ink pretty effectively. Um, as this dries, obviously I can see through right now to my craft mat underneath, but I've got a nice pink shade going throughout that. The purple spread out a little bit more. I did lose the netting effect. I can still see it in a few small places. Um, so if I wanted more of that, I'd need to go back and add that back in. I think I'll do a little bit because I did like that. There we go. It's kind of cool. All right, so netting, you can use it on top of other things to create some really neat patterns. And we might come back to this and use it on something else um, to lift off some ink, but gives you an idea. And tissue paper is really, really easy. Old patterns, let's face it, most of the time you can't reuse them very often. So you have a lot of this if you're a sewer laying around, and I, I do personally. So I'm gonna tuck that to the side and that's kind of ready to go. The last one I have is burlap. Um, I've done this, all of these a couple different ways. This is a really easy one to spray brush again, or spray brush, to mist or airbrush, either one. I could come in and do So there we go, I've got a really funky, neat looking piece of fabric now. Um, I can use it in a few different ways. I can use strips, long or short. I can also pull out pieces and I've got this wonderful colored um, twine that I can use as well. I will definitely be using this in my mixed media album when we put it all together in a few months. It's probably about three months away that we'll actually add all these pieces in together. We've got tool, we've got netting, pattern paper or tissue paper. I've got silk done in a few different ways and ribbon. All of these can be done completely for your own use, whether it's for card making, for crafting, mixed media, scrapbooking, all are fun techniques and I encourage you to try them today. Get scraps of fabric. You can get as small as three inch, six inch um, strips from the fabric store and play to your heart's content. Um, it really is a fun technique. Obviously very messy, but it gets great results and just really creates a colorful world. Hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll come back next month to see more.